Hi, so before we start the actual episode, I had a bit of footage left over from the recording sessions that kind of didn't fit into an extra episode on its own, but also I did encounter like a couple of things that were a little bit too important just to leave out, so we're gonna do that first, and then the actual episode is gonna start. So here's a brief highlight reel cut together from about an hour's worth of exploring. Oh, you son of a- Go away. Huh, another ring of blades. That's nice. Okay. Oh, there's actually one thing I want to do in Majula. There's a- there's a thing I want to test. I want to see. Hello. I knew it. Ah, oh, yes. There is something I wanted to tell you. I was born in the land of Mira. Mira is also the home of an infamous killer, a knight in name alone. He was locked in the dungeon for multiple murders. But shortly before his execution, he managed to escape. And the other day, I saw a fellow with a striking likeness. And then, and then, wait, well, I think he looked rather similar. No, no it's true. I saw just such a man, I swear. I believe his name was Cray uh, something. I believe they shared some resemblance, I, I think. Oh, that's the guy I met in the in the in the hunter's cops, I think. Even more flames have appeared. I don't know what causes it. I do. Did you see the flame on the map? It wasn't there when I I don't know. But there is something. It seems to fulfill something very precious, deep within the soul. Something essential. So, these are flames that ignite when I beat certain bosses across the game. But there's five of them, so it can't just be the great souls. Must be them and something else. Well, I haven't been down here, so might be worth going around. Hello. Oh. Hey, Luca Teal. You... My thoughts... Are very... Scattered. Yeah. What is this curse? The question rings in my mind, but I haven't the focus to answer it. Loss frightens me no end. Loss of memory, loss of self. If I were told that by killing you, I would be freed of this curse, then I would draw my sword without hesitation. I don't want to die. I want to exist. I would sacrifice anything. Anything at all for this. It shames me. But it is the truth. Sometimes I feel obsessed with this insignificant thing called self. Even so, I am compelled to preserve it. Am I wrong to feel so? Surely you do the same in my shoes. I am doing the same. Maybe we're all cursed from the moment we're born. Maybe we're all cursed from the moment we're born with the struggle that we call identity, yeah. Luca Teal seems to be entering the final stages of her derangement. Kinda wish I had run down there earlier to find her before we fought Mitha. But oh well. But yeah, she very succinctly sums up the, the, like one of the points of the game that I've certainly been harping on about. Maybe we're all cursed from the moment we're born. Like, this struggle for identity is one that all human beings suffer.
Hello, sovereigns and superheroes. My name is TB's Guy, and welcome back to the Boss Designs of Dark Souls 2. So, I don't know if we're going to be using this intro. That depends on what Future Sky decides to do with the editing. But if he doesn't decide to use this intro, there's no point doing it. But if he does, what we're going to be doing now, I think, probably, is we're going to be heading to find King Vendrick, who is somewhere behind a door that I remember encountering that said something about you need to gather great souls, blah, blah, blah. And if I remember correctly, that particular door is somewhere in the shaded woods. And fortuitously, something else that's also in the shaded woods is a Vingarl, who's, who I've been told sells more great swords. And I want more great swords because I'm, damn it, I want to dual wield. I want to dual wield them, and I'm gonna. Okay, and if I get the cat ring out, I think I can drop down here. And Vingarl is gonna be like right there. Maybe. Maybe not. No, 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 that's it, that's it, that's where he is. Right, kitty cat ring. Whee! Sup, dude? Back again. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Right, how much does he want for a greatsword? 5,000, okay. I do not have 5,000. Hello! I'm back! Gimme, 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 gimme. Yes. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes. And once I've upgraded... <laughs> Rip my roll, though. <laughs> oh, what's my equip? 81%! Okay. <laughs> uh, not much I can do about it, is there? At that point, I should just, like... Fuck it, let's just... Can I even move? <laughs> Can I even recover stamina? No, holy sh! Yeah. That stamina recovery is just like. <laughs> oh man! Look, <laughs> look at that! I'm like barely moving. Oh god, that would be so good. Uh, but alas, not yet. Not yet. Just naked with two giant great swords. That's gonna be how I end the game. Okay, that's enough of that. We have we have set the stage <laughs> for dual wielding ultra great swords. So now we can go and try and see if we can find that King Vendrick door. Oh, this time I know what you are. This time I know. Please tell me this is the right way to the door. And I'm not gonna be running into the troll. Ah, no, this is correct. Hey, it opened. Wait, is this more DLC stuff? Forbidden is the path to the ancient kings to men with water dry, blah, blah, blah. Trespassers, blah, blah. Elium Lois, the land of the ivory king lies cold as death with nary a hint of warmth remaining. So this is more DLC stuff, right? But I can also pass through and go onwards. Let me just see what's here. Presumably there's gonna be a locked, oh, wait a minute. Nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Ooh, that's new. Where does this go? Follow the path, man. Someone worked hard on randomly scattering these flagstones on the ground. Respect it. Feels familiar, but I clearly haven't been here or I would have murdered those guys and also picked up that divine blessing. And what's down the other way? Oh, hey! So I needed to, like, kill four ultra super bosses possessed of giant souls because some stuff fell over in the woods and I couldn't climb over it. <laughs> That's a one. That's a two. You wary of so Yeah, no sh-
Inattention ahead, visions of sadness. Yeah, see... Here the weather is fine. And then we pass through a dark corridor. And we emerge in a landscape devoid of trees. With complete- with different weather. Hmm. Oh, that sounds like- Ah! Well, they haven't gotten less annoying since the Bastille. What? What do you mean, splash? How the hell is it splash? There's not that much water here. Ooh. Oh, heavy and Orlando feels here, except... Obviously. Less an Orlando and more... Darkness. Wait. Is that... Is that the Herald? This castle is isolated. Hello. But nonetheless, you must forge on to bring an end to your journey and mine. Can I level up with you, or are you just here to be cryptic? Okay, there's gonna be like a gargoyle that comes to life and tries to murder me up here or something. Like those things, those, I, they look like statues. They look like statues, yeah, I knew it. Oh good, I'm all the way back here. <laughs> back in the saddle again. Okay. Hello. Please be gone, Herald, so I don't have to worry about you. Hey, can I just run up and run past them? I think I'm gonna try. Nope. Then there's gonna be like four more of them up here, aren't there? Oh yeah, all of those guys are gonna come to life. All of them. Yeah! Well, at least I'd have more room to fight them here. What are you? Ah! So many people here, what the hell? What the? Leave me alone! What did I ever do to you except try to kill you? Okay, hello. Did you do a thing? What? Where did you come from? Do these guys just endlessly respawn? What the hell? Okay, but you're not alive, right? No. They respawn. Okay. Okay, you there. Hello. Do I need you to open the gate? Do I need to kill something to make you do it? Is there like a gate guardian that I need to murder? So I got one of them to do it. But I don't know how I got one of them to do it. Hello. Well, I mean... It's not... Uh, Okay. Jeez, grumpy. Okay, is that gonna wake him up? Hello? No. Enemy required. Could you guys just follow me over here, please? <clears throat> Hello? Aha!
Enemy required. Thank you very much, ground message. I don't think I would have figured that one out on my own, but that explains why they respawn, at least. Okay. Now open the door. Anytime. Cool. Let me in. Unless something in there wants to kill me, in which case, don't let me in. Okay, so there's a ghost man up there. And I sense... A trap. Decent odds that Mr. Ghostman is just gonna throw a fireball in my face. Hey, hello! Everyone seems to be petrified in here, that's interesting. Okay, how many of you are gonna come to life? Wake me up! Wake me up inside! <laughs> So, yeah, old dusty castle full of petrified dudes. This place needs a good cleaning, doesn't it? You are definitely alive. I knew it. Knew it. You are too. Okay, maybe not. One day you'll go through the rain. Oh no. Okay, if there's a chance I'm gonna get killed in there, I'm not going in. I'm not going back to the goddamn bonfire in the woods. Okay, Mr. Ghost Man. Hey, 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 Mr. Ghost Man. Please don't throw a fireball at my face, man. Hi, hello. Can't target you, so... Who are you? And by whose permission do you stand before me? This castle is the domain of King Vendrick. Is your trespass intentional? His Highness. Where has he gone? You are a guest of our castle. I am the Chancellor, Belaga. Do you seek an audience with my lord, King Vendrick? Unfortunately, His Highness is absent. Ah, uh, doubt. My lord, the King has. The Queen has taken him. My lord made magnificent findings on souls. An accomplishment for the ages. He vanquished four great ones and built this kingdom upon their souls. Oh, that sounds familiar. Our king has watched over this land since ages long, long ago. King Vendrick. We must fight back. Or the giants will take Dragleg. So that guy is stuck in the past, I see. The king had a dear queen, a woman of unparalleled beauty. Long ago, the queen came to us, alone, from a faraway land. She warned our lord of the looming threat across the seas, of the giants. Did she now? The king crossed the ocean and defeated the giants with the queen at his side. Indeed. The king commandeered their power created the golems. With the golems, the king created this castle. I see. To celebrate victory and to show his love, his gratitude to his queen. The queen brought peace to this land and to her king. A peace so deep. It was like the dark. Is this some sort of a dream? Where am I? What has happened to our castle? Who are you? And by whose permission? Welcome. Our guests are treated with honor. This is the way of our castle. Tell me if you should require anything. Tell so, me. he basically forgot who I was by the end of our conversation. Talk about a man who's not quite sure where or when he is. He thinks he's still at war with the giants. And he's also revealed to us that the war with the giants was not a defensive war against invaders. It was a war of conquest. They went to the land of the giants and started murdering them. Okay, there better be a bonfire in here and not something that's gonna kill me. Well, neither it seems, except for all those pools of blood. I don't trust this at all. Yeah, these guys were fighting something when they died.
Okay, so nothing? Dark throne, light throne. That's the king's throne. Queen's throne. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, but there better be a goddamn mother bonfire here somewhere. I don't trust any of this. Not even a little bit. I don't trust any of this. Okay. Uh, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me! I think I saw... Ah! Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Ah. Uh... And this tells me that there's definitely... S wait, Small Hat Lisa? Is she a relative of Big Hat Logan? Okay. All right. Okay. How many of you guys are alive? It's gonna be a non-zero amount. This is... Oh, those are golems. Right. Okay. Wait, I know this. I need to kill enemies near the golems. Yeah! There we are. Hello. Hi. Oh boy. Okay. I can't go nearer the statues, because the golems, because then I'll just wake more of these bastards up, but... Okay, they're not that strong. Oh! Oh! Oh, there's lots of doors. Oh boy, okay. What the hell? Dude! Yes, hello! Scared the crap out of me. Please don't try to backstab me. I think that's a viewer. I'm reasonably sure. Frozen flower. Yeah, it's, <laughs> okay. I don't know if he's gonna try and attack me. I don't trust that. Oh, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> you got a big sword. That is... Uh, so are those statues, or...? Are those just animated suits of armor? Ah! Oh, hey, lunatic! <laughs> no, I should not step into that, should I? That's acid. Bet it is. Oh, God. Oh, f oh, f oh, f strong offense from up front gaming, moving in for the kill there. Lunatic Thinker with a great dodge around the side. The opponents are parrying each other, dancing around. Oh, up front gaming with that health advantage. Lunatic Thinker is on the ropes. He's barely got a shred of health left, and that's the hit. Lunatic Thinker goes down as up front gaming takes the victory, and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how did this... This was so tense just a second ago. <laughs> so I guess I'm being followed around by a viewer right now. <laughs> Mildly inconvenient, but all right. Oh, hello. Okay, which one of you... Oh, all of you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, stop defending, you coward. What kind of coward uses a shield? Get good. Ugh. Oh, boy. Curse ahead. Try destroy. Who is that? Is that the queen? Try destroy, huh? Oh, mother... Hey. Holy... Wow. What the d lady? Okay, I think that painting's trying to tell me something. Hmm. Well, if I can break it, I don't have the tools right now. So, subtle bit of messaging there. The portrait of the queen is cursed. I can't interact with it, no? No. Is super cursed. Holy sh! I mean, you're gonna have to move, dude. I need to go past. Seriously, get out of my way. Okay, which one of you is gonna come alive? Not that one. 
Are they gonna come alive when I go up the stairs and then come after me? Yep. I knew it. I called it. Oh, stagger, you bastard. Oh, that's one. That's the one for the Shrine of Winter. Okay, good. Now, Iron Key. The old Iron King's castle sunk into a lake of fire. Weighed down by the castle's iron and the burden of the king's conceit. Over ages, the iron was stripped from the castle by opportunistic passes by. The Iron Door 2 must be somewhere far away. The Iron Door, huh? So the Iron King's door. <laughs> I'm so paranoid about... I know it's a viewer. I know he's probably not going to try and kill me. But I can't help but feel like he's just biding his time. Waiting for the right moment. Oh, <laughs> round two. <laughs> it's round two of the championships. Here at the Drang Lake Castle, the opponents are squaring up. Lunatic Thinker putting down a miracle. <laughs> oh, there's the first explosion. That strong opening from up front gaming. Lunatic Thinker a little bit on the ropes. Trying to get hit in with his long sword. Not managing it as. Upfront Gaming is quick on those rolls. Lunatic Thinker circling around, looking for an opening. Upfront Gaming has him got, got him unlocked, though. Much faster around the corners, but Lunatic Thinker dodges at the last second. Oh, there's an overhead swing. Doesn't connect, unfortunately. The swing is too fast. And here comes Upfront Gaming. Lunatic Thinker circles around behind, but misses the crucial attack. Trying to reposition here. Maybe he's looking for an opportunity to put down that miracle. He gets a hit and gets, almost gets two, almost gets three, but no! He attacks it too fast. Up front gaming is too fast on his feet, and Lunatic Thinker goes down in the second round. <laughs> so there's the queen. Hello. Are you going to curse me when I come close as well? And then back here is a fog door. All right. Oh, sh What's this? Oh, it's a dragon rider. Oh. Oh, I see. Dragon rider and another dra- Oh, God. Okay. Here we're seeing them at full power, I guess. Right. So how do I get that <laughs> down from there? Do I have to kill his friend first? Or is it going to be like a bell gargoyles thing where he doesn't come down until his friend is low health? Well, at least I do decent damage. Ow! Couldn't dodge out of that in time. Okay. Right. So I should not... Well, that was pointless. Right. This is not Ornstein and Smau, but it's damn close. Okay. I'm doing damage. I'm gonna take a hit from the arrow. Yeah. But... Making progress. Ah, uh, yeah, I was right. I was right. I was right. God damn it. I hate when I'm right. Oh, f***ing hell. Oh, it's Red Oni, Blue Oni. They're red and blue. Ha. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, it gives me an opportunity to talk about that, at least. Oh. I was hoping that would kill him. Okay, if I can finish off one, the other one won't be that difficult. Just need to get one hit. Yeah, there we go. Good. Worth it. Right. Now you. You little son of a... Yahoo! Damn it. Oh, come on! That hit his shield, really? That hit his shield? I'll just dodge left around him this time, then. That's better. Oh, he does not have a lot of health. Oh, he does not have any health at all. In fact, he's got no health now. That's all of his health is gone. Bye. Ugh, oh, Jesus. 
Hey, Dragon Rider Soul. I don't think... Did I get one of those last time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. But does this one say something different? Nope. But it does mean I get to buy the second bit of gear from him. Nice. Okay. So the arena here... Look at that. I mean, the texture is a little bit naff, but... This is a treasure room. This is wealth and gold and riches. And an altar to an absent god. And that's a pulpit, so this is also a religious worship site? Oh, wait, hang on, wait. Oh, talk! You have fought admirably on your journey, cursed undead. I am Nishandra, Queen of Dranglik. A true monarch carries the weight of their souls. The last king of this land. King Vendrick, as he was called. He found the strength to rule his people. And when the undead were born, cursed. He found more strength to face them. Did he now? But in the end, he never took the true throne. Oh, indeed. Vendrick. We have no need for two rulers. Oh, indeed. Do we not? What is it that you're hoping I will do to him when I find him, dear queen? Poor soul, but charmer. I journeyed from the distant east to perfect my swordsmanship. And legend has it that powerful beings slumber in this land. This sword has been in my family for generations, and only a real man can wield it true. I may face any man, a man, a beast, but none shall be a match for my sword. <laughs> Indeed. This land is the right mess, eh? King's gone. The people of our mad glint in their eyes. The land itself is overrun by terrible beasts. No better place to test my sword, eh? <laughs> Right. So we ran into the guy in the Iron Fortress who implied that this guy's sword is a fake. Which I thought was quite interesting. So I'm just gonna... So, a little PSA here. It was a lot of fun having the guy who invaded me upfront gaming and lunatic thinker who came to help me as part of the Covenant of the Knights of Blue square off against each other in a couple of combat arenas while I comment on it as though it was esports. It was a lot of fun, but it was also very inconvenient. Because I had a phantom running around and another phantom showing up in order to fight him, I was very distracted from the thing which I was actually trying to do, which was to go through the world and try to understand and analyze it to the best of my abilities. And it also kind of created a problem for me in the editing, because do I cut that stuff out? Do I leave it in? In this case, I had no choice but to leave it in, whether or not I felt like it was the right fit for the episode, because it kind of dominated a substantial section of me running through the castle basically up until I encountered the boss. So while it was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed seeing it play out, and thank you very much to Upfront Gaming and Lunatic Thinker for putting on a show for us, I would prefer if this kind of thing doesn't happen again. Now, I record this series on stream, so it's natural and completely fine that people might want to invade me, to mess with me, or to screw around a little bit, and that's completely okay. But if you do invade me, please treat me like any other Dark Souls 2 player and come at me intending to kill me. And by the same token, if you want to come and assist me as a Knight of Blue, then I'd be very grateful for the help, but just behave towards me the same way that you would behave towards any other Dark Souls 2 player. Because the thing I want and need out of this series is the normal experience of playing Dark Souls 2, invasions and blue phantoms included. 
that's what I base my analysis around, and that's what I try to make this series about. So you are all very welcome to invade me and mess with me as much as you want, because that is the Dark Souls 2 experience. But let's not do any more uh, Fight Club episodes on the boss designs of Dark Souls 2. Maybe we can start that up as a separate series someday, but for the moment I just want to play Dark Souls 2 as normal as I can. Hmm. Oh, you! It's the f weebs again! Jerk. Well, can't go in there yet. Presumably need to pull a lever somewhere. So there's plenty more to explore in the castle, like that. those rooms full of dudes. And with the soul things and... Hmm, okay. Boss, I hope not. What a thrill when darkness and silence through the night. What a thrill. I'm searching and I'll meld into you. Okay, so visions of boss. Which means there's gonna be something in there that I don't want to mess with. Right. Okay. So hang on a sec. That was another pair of the Dragon Riders. And while I don't know that they will necessarily make for uh, individual subjects for analysis for future Sky, I'm still nonetheless gonna throw it over to him now in case he wants to talk about them. Who knows? Like, maybe he has something to say. Uh, I don't know what his thinking pattern is like. He's weird. He does all kind of weird brainy stuff. I just like to hit things with swords. So, over to you for this one, Future Skyen. Well, thank you very much, Paskyen, and good job hitting the bad guys with your little swords. That was so brave of you. But you're right, there probably isn't a full episode in the two Dragon Riders, but fortunately, the Dragon Riders aren't the only thing we encountered in Drang Lake Castle. Still, we'll start with the Dragon Riders, because although they are mostly identical to the one we encountered in Haida's Tower way back in the second episode of this series, there are a few things about them that are still worth talking about. So, back in episode 2, I conceded that maybe the Dragon Riders specifically didn't have a lot to say about my central theme about the creation and destruction of personal identity. But actually, I think I'm ready to go back on that just a little bit. Because both in episodes 2 and 4, where we encountered the Ruin Sentinels, I ended up talking about the ways in which standardized armor can enact a totalizing negation of identity. How armor and uniforms can themselves represent not a personal identity, but a group identity. The first Dragon Rider we encountered, absent context, was an awkward fit for my reading because as far as I knew, he was a unique enemy, a boss to be encountered only once. But in this episode, and God help me as we shall see in a later one, the Order of the Dragon Riders is alive and well, and so is its standardized uniform, a group identity under the banner of King Vendrick, and a total negation of the personality of the individual. Well, except, during the fight, I mentioned something called Red Oni, Blue Oni, in reference to the fact that, while it's a little difficult to tell due to the lighting, the Dragon Rider duo are tinted red and blue. Now, Red Oni, Blue Oni is a trope on TVTropes.org that basically describes the dynamic of a fairly standard double act. Red Oni is passionate, wild and brash, and Blue Oni is calm, calculating and intellectual, generally. Now, speaking of TV tropes, I'm just gonna divert for a second. It turns out I have a page on TV tropes, which... That's one of the most terrifying things that has ever happened to me, and also thank you very much to whoever took the time to create it. I will never look at it because it scares the crap out of me. Yeah, anyway, back to the actual analysis. The trope goes back to Japanese folklore and fairy tales, but it has an enormous presence as a visual character design shorthand in pop culture, both inside and outside of Japan. And when we encounter the Dragon Rider duo, what should happen but that the Red Rider charges at us straight away, fighting us head on and drawing our attention while while unseen, cleverly hiding in a safe position, the Blue Rider sets up an ambush with his bow, forcing us to stay on the move while we try and deal with his much more aggressive partner. Red Oni, Blue Oni. 
And carrying it further, the Blue Rider is much more fragile than his red compatriot, giving him a good reason to stay out of the melee until the last minute. He is specialized in ranged combat, while his friend is much more of a melee specialist. But if the trope holds true, then, that means that their devotion to the knightly order of the Dragon Riders and the totalizing negation of their armor that they wear hasn't actually obliterated their individual identities. They have personalities, individual specialties, very strengths. A group identity, yes, but one that coexists with rather than destroys the individual identity. I mean, they're literally color-coded. So hey, that's all a bit interesting and actually does relate to the main reading of the game that I have so far. So that's interesting. But even with all that, the Dragon Riders still aren't that interesting, and they certainly don't carry an analysis segment all on their own. No, I have a different subject in mind. So, in Dark Souls 1, there is also a fight with a duo of armored knightly guardians in a grand castle, and it too is connected to an encounter with royalty. Now, in Dark Souls 1, we meet the goddess Guinevere, who uses all of her substantial charm to implore us to continue our mission to succeed Lord Gwyn and restore the world to fire. We encounter Guinevere in a boudoir, almost a bedchamber, and despite her enormous size towering godlike above us, it is an intimate space, a comfortable space filled with pillows and satins and carpets and softness. Its colors are warm and bathed in golden light, and in her overwhelming largeness, Guinevere is also overwhelmingly available to us, there for us to look at, to feel close to. Your conversation with Guinevere is a seduction. A seduction to make your character see things the way the gods want you to see them. Succeed, Lord Gwyn. Restore the Age of Fire. This beautiful, smiling goddess will be ever so grateful to you if you do. It is also an illusion, created by Gwendolyn, specifically to seduce you, to make you see Guinevere and the things that she advocates for as good. Now, Queen Nashandra is not trying to seduce you. In fact, almost everything about our encounter with her is the polar opposite of Guinevere. The space is not intimate. It is clinical and distant, with a literal gaping void separating you from the queen. She sits on a throne far away, framed in bare stones and cold glass. She is dressed severely and modestly and sits upright, where Guinevere lounges and reclines. And where Guinevere speaks in flattery and pleading, Nashandra speaks in statements. You have fought well to get here. A true monarch carries the weight of their souls. We have no need for two rulers. She gives you not a request, but an order. Visit Vendrick. So Nashandra is the total opposite of Guinevere, except in one crucial respect. She too is clearly trying to deceive you, not by seduction, but by an appeal to her identity. I am the Queen of Drang Lake. She expects you to obey her because of who she is, her connection to Vendrick, the knowledge you assume that she has about your situation and how to defeat the curse. But how do I know that she's specifically deceiving me? Well, the castle told me. The Ghost Chancellor Welliger says that the Queen has taken the King, whatever that means, and also tells us that she arrived long ago alone from a faraway land and spurred the King to war with the Giants, on her word that they constituted a threat. The King built a castle for her, so in love was he. The Queen, says Welliger, brought a deep peace to the land, so deep that it felt like the dark. And then there's her command, visit Vendrick, followed by, we have no need for two rulers. Oh, she doesn't tell you to kill him, but she sure does imply that if he happened to die, I mean, oh well, wouldn't be a great loss to anyone, surely. We don't need two rulers, after all. Now, she doesn't, of course, specify whether the one ruler that would be left is you on your quest for kingship, or her. Now, all of that is ominous enough, but just in case you didn't, like, get it, her giant portrait is literally the most cursed object I have encountered in the entire game. And, oh, by the way, curse, the status condition curse, is the curse of hollowing, the curse that we are fighting. It is the curse of undeath. 
the curse that drains someone's souls until there's nothing left of who they once were. And who has the literal most powerful souls of anyone in Drang Lake? The most souls to drain. Why, Vendrick, of course. Or at least he used to. I wonder how many he will have left when we finally meet him. Now, I don't know if Nashandra is going to be an active or a passive villain in the story, but I know she's not telling me the truth, and I know that I don't trust her. Hey, thank you very much for watching another episode of the boss designs of Dark Souls 2, and also the NPC designs of Dark Souls 2 now, I suppose. If you have enjoyed it, then I would like to ask you to do the thing that all YouTubers ask you to do, and hit the like, comment, subscribe button, bell icon, and all of those buttons, like in whatever combination that might feel right to you. And the reason why YouTubers always ask you to do that is because of the way that YouTube works, which is that a video getting views, oh yeah, that's nice and all, but what the algorithm really wants is for people people to be, air quotes, engaged by the video. And how do they measure that engagement? Well, how many of the damn buttons do people click once they're done watching the video? So if you want to help me out, or indeed any of the YouTubers who you watch, clicking that little button down below, just the like button if you want to, that alone is actually quite helpful. If you want to help me out more directly than that, well, I have a Patreon and I have a tip jar. You can avail yourself of either of those if you want. And I have a merchandise store. Some of the stuff on which is there is going to be showing up on your screen now. Boy, that was not a very well-constructed sentence. Of course, if you don't want to support me directly, that's completely fine. I get it, especially in times like these, but at the end of my videos, I do try to encourage people to, generally speaking, try to support the content creators whose work they enjoy directly with anything you can whenever you can, because for online content creators like me, that $1 donation, that tiny pledge on Patreon, literally means the same as thousands of views when it comes to ad revenue. So especially for smaller or indeed niche content creators who are creating stuff that just doesn't appeal to a broad YouTube audience, that direct support, even in small amounts, has an enormously outsized impact. Especially in times like these, when the state of the world is causing advertisers to pull their advertisements left and right and tanking ad revenue for content creators, direct support matters more than ever. So if you have a content creator whose work you enjoy, please consider supporting them directly with anything you can, whenever you can, because it matters so much more than you think. Anyway, I'm almost done like advertising things to you. So the last thing I have to plug is my second channel where I do more Let's Plays, which is kind of like the boss designs of Dark Souls 2, except without all the editing and jokes, which Okay, I'm not doing a great job of selling it, but I promise you it's, it's good. I do analysis content over there as well as try to talk about themes and story and character design in the games that I'm playing. Currently, we're doing Final Fantasy VIII as well as Majora's Mask and some game that we're going to be streaming uh, yet to be announced. We've just finished Portal and Portal 2. So go over there, subscribe, maybe hit the like button on those videos sometimes also. That would be good. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and please remember to wash your hands. Thank you.